We're doing the uh, online workshop, on, uh, and today we're talking, uh, the, the class is being done from my book, Don't Panic, It's Organic, and the chapter is on organic fruit tree care. So you're going to need the book. You go to Amazon, get it, so you, so you can follow through with the book. Thank you. Remember, you already have the book. It's in PDF format. Remember, remember, membership is free, so you can join, and you'll get the book in PDF format. All right, so you have to get it from Amazon. Pre-recorded, so we'll be taking calls in towards the second half of the show, and I'll let you know when. Thank you. So the number is there. So you can use the Zoom number to call, or you can call the 800 number, 888-627-6008, or 323-744-4831. I'll let you know when you can call. If you have any questions on this workshop, you can uh, email me or and send me uh, your question. I'll be happy to answer them. So the uh, first half of this workshop is uh, videotaped, so there'll be no calls. The second half is going to be live, which means you'll be able to call me on my and any of the numbers I've set up here for you to call, the toll-free number, the 888-627-68000-6008, or you can click on the Zoom meeting, which is 466-384-062 to get into the Zoom with us. Today is Organic Food Tree Care Lesson 5. We're going to be talking to you about how to keep the soil healthy and then some uh, common um, citrus diseases. So many, many of you know who I am, but just in case you don't, my name is Andy Lopez. I'm known as the Invisible Gardener. Um, I do a variety of different things. Uh, this is the time I'm doing uh, my show online classes. It's going to be a year long. We're basically covering my book, on Natural uh, Low Pest Control, I turn it to chemicals for the home and garden. We're turning it into a workshop. We're on chapter, uh, uh, chapter uh, two, and we we uh, going into uh, uh, what's doing organic food tree care, and I will be covering uh, some uh, common uh, diseases in the pest and, and citrus, uh, and then uh, uh, then also um, if I have any time, I'll also be covering uh, common uh, some common uh, pests in, of citrus. Uh, next uh, next uh, so we have another week left. And so I'm going to be talking. I like to try to keep each chapter per month. The next month after that is going to be on uh, uh, how uh, natural tree care, right? So um, if you uh, want to, this first half of the show is taped. Uh, and you, but th th uh, that means that, uh, you know, if you want to call, you can always call and chat with me. And then if you want to hang on for the half hour or so, then you could be on, be ready to start talking live. Otherwise, you can just ask me questions, just chat it on there, and I'll be happy to answer it uh, when the show starts. The other way you can communicate with me is you send an email to Andy Lopez at invisiblegardener.com. Hopefully you send it before the show so that I can get it. I'll have it ready here. Uh, if you try to send it during the show, I don't check. I don't check. I, I don't check my email until after the show, so it won't be on the show. But it will be on the next show. So this is lesson five of Invisible Gardener's online uh, workshop. Um, it's uh, it's right now currently free. All you have to do is uh, get my book. It's a twenty dollar book. That way you can follow through with it. Uh, if, if you remember, you already have the book. It's in PDF format. Uh, membership is free right away, so you can join also and get the book in PDF format and get it. The print version is available through Amazon.com. So today I'll be talking to you uh, about some common citrus uh, diseases. So there's a uh, citrus tree. Tristella, there's the Asian uh, citrus, there's the Asian citrus leaf miner, a citrus canker, and root rot. You're all familiar with those, I think, right? So before I start on this, I want to make it perfectly clear with with you that you don't really need to know the disease or the pest. You just need to under, understand that they're all related to the health of the soil, and you're not going to succeed in doing any of these temporary treatments if you don't immediately start paying attention to the health of the soil. I concentrate on water, too much water, concentrate on bringing rock dust, compost, and mulch. Live compost is essential. You cannot do it without. Think how Mother Nature does it. And the mulch is essential. 
Think how Mother Nature does it. Leaves fall, constantly adding a mulch layer. So you have to do that. Otherwise, you will not succeed in any of these disease, common simple disease controls, right? So if you deal with that and you'll learn, then your compost tea will be absolutely amazing and it will even work. Everything you do will be, takes time. You have to give it time for it to heal, right? Okay, here we go. This is Tristia, Tristia, Tristesia is a virus. Uh, it's caught what it causes seedlings to turn yellow, causes severe uh, stem pitting, and it causes a decline, a quick, very quick decline in, of the citrus health, uh, which may even kill the tree, and of course it won't produce any fruit. Um, it, it's spread by ants, and they of course bring around the aphids. And so the aphids is one of the, the, of the vectors that, that spreads the disease. Uh, to control the aphids, there's always short-term and long-term solution. And I talked to you about uh, both uh, the long-term solution being, of course, the soil, which you have to do to the soil, help the soil come back. That's what's going on, real problem. And of course, until then, you want to keep your citrus, and so there's certain things you can do to help them. Uh, the, one of the main things you want to do is learn how to do foliar feeding. So you want to provide them the nutrition that they need. They're missing the trace minerals that they're missing, right? At the same time, you can control the the aphids and any other type of uh, bug pests up there. Uh, coffee, caffeine is a perfect tool. Uh, you learn how to make. I would buy go to the store and buy coffee, but French vanilla. And uh, if you drink it, you make uh, you, you basically buy two separate, you know containers, one for you to drink from, the other one, you want it to use it at full strength. So you make a batch of coffee, and then you spray it on the, pl on the plants. Ideally, coffee, cream, and sugar is not a bad idea, because a little bit of uh, molasses, Granny Smith's molasses, and, and the, uh, uh, the cream, which is calcium, is also needed. And then the coffee, if it's organic coffee, it'll have you rich in iron and a variety of other trace minerals. Now the Asian uh, leaf miner, a lot of you have been encountering this lately, uh, it's due to the, the heat of the uh, heat rising destroying the soil, and when the soil gets, soil gets destroyed, uh, the plants living on the soil are not getting nutrients. So again, it comes back down to the Asian citrus leaf miner is there because it's food. He it knows that it's perfect food. The citrus pr is, provides perfect food for his self and for his children. So again, you got to do the short term or long term. The long term is something's going on in the soil. You better pay attention to it. I'll tell you about it in a little bit. In the interim, you want to keep them, keep them off your tree. Um, learn to use this. Uh, the coffee is great. I would use uh, cold brew coffee, B-R-E-W, organic cold brew coffee. One of those eight ounces is like having 10 cups of coffee. You just dump that whole thing and three gallons of uh, nice clean water, add a cup or two of milk, and throw in a couple of tablespoons of uh, Granny Smith's molasses. Very nice, dark molasses, rich in iron. Alternate between doing that and applying compost tea. So if you have my, biologically active, minerally rich compost tea, that would definitely go a long way because that's what the plant's missing is the various sources of trace minerals that, it's, that it needs. And that's why the bricks level is very low. If you were to measure the, the level of the bricks level of the tree, you'll find it could be in the tents or even lower. lower. One of the ways to ensure that you're going to do trace minerals is I use called C90, S-E-A-90. Look it up, S-E-A-90.com. That's over 90 trace minerals. Follow instructions. You don't want to burn it because it is a salt. And then you can also learn how to add a variety of other different microbials, mycorrhiza. They're in abundance everywhere. Uh, you can go to Amazon and type in microbials or mycorrhiza. You're going to find a whole bunch. Uh, I buy a variety of different ones of them. There's one called shark, <laughs> or maybe it's jaws, right? And it's a wonderful source, but you, I, you, I get, I, I'm a little eccentric. I get a variety of different sources of mycorrhiza. Uh, there are many different products on the market now that you can get this from, you know, different sizes. One of them is called Perfect Fungi. I go up there and I go, Myco, I get my Myco, M Y C O, Myco, Myco Grow. Okay, that's the name of it. It's basically my mycorrhiza, an excellent source of mycorrhiza. We have the famous citrus canker. Citrus canker is a contagious bacterial infection of citrus, which means that you can spread it from one citrus tree to another one. If you don't take, if you don't know how to prune your citrus, and you know you don't know how to clean your tools, 
and it, it causes a, a, a halo-like lesions or scabs on the leaves. There's the fruit and twigs of the citrus trees. The severe infection, of course, would damage the fruit as well. So you, I'm not trying to try to give you too much description of these. You already should know what they are. Now, this particular, this is again, it, cut, it starts in the soil. This is that's why it's uh, it should be called citrus soil canker, right? So root rot is essentially that. Very easy to describe, right? And again, it's a salt problem in the soil. Automatically, you should know the overwatering. As a matter of fact, almost all these problems are, are, that we have just talked about, these common diseases, they all have in common. In fact, one of the things you're doing is overwatering. The overwatering destroys the soil, right? They, they don't swim very well. Microbes don't swim very well. So we have a combination of overwatering and really high heat. Uh, sometimes you go through a long time without water, and then sometimes you water a lot because it's hot, you try to water more. Uh, so it doesn't really, really help. And of course, it's the soil. The key to there is the health of the soil. And, and so if you don't pay attention to that, you're going to have a, a continual pest and disease problem. Two, a few other diseases I want to cover with. One of them is called grassy spot. It basically starts off as a brownish spot on the leaves and it, uh, often on the underside of the leaves and the, the disease gets worse, uh, it, they'll turn into oily looking blisters. Again, this is overwatering, this destruction of the soil through overwatering and of course, combination of overwatering high heat uh, means there's hardly any living microbial there at all other than the bad guys. And so remote, is a fungus that you see on, it's a black thing on the leaves, it's got the black stuff on top and, and very dusty, it looks like a, uh, the chimney had fallen stuff had sued that point, that's why it's called sooty mold. Well, that is, is a product of the ants herding aphids and mealybugs and other creatures that they use as a nectar, they milk them as a nectar, and they don't take all, everything for some reason, and then what they leave behind grows, is this a mold that grows and needs, it needs water and it needs a certain amount of heat. One more uh, disease, there's a whole bunch of but this is the one I want to talk to today. It's called the HOB citrus greening disease. Uh, you, should, you can look it up. It's a lot of long history. It's been going on in Florida. And now it's been coming over here to California. Uh, they say there's no control for it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, it, and you know, again, it comes down to the health of the soil. They're not getting the proper nutrition. They're, they're getting, if it's chemically based, the high nitrogen with, and always inhibits its, the absorption of trace minerals. So, uh, and, and, it's, and it's one of the exotic trace minerals. It's not just a simple calcium deficiency or a magnesium deficiency. Wouldn't that be easy, right? It's an exotic trace mineral. You remember saying there are 90 trace minerals? Well, it's probably number 89 on the 90. Uh, there are a variety of different exotic trace minerals. Uh, those, and those are the ones you're not going to find in any normal way. So that's why you want to go out of your way to get uh, a different uh, source of sources of trace metals, and one of them should have it for you. See what I mean? So that's why I get C90, C890. I get 14 different types of rock dust. Some are richer, richer, and uh, in one mineral, some are deficient in one mineral, but rich in another mineral. Uh, so I get a blend of those things. And seriously, 14 different types of rock dust is a very good blend. So you know you have it covered. You have that, and with the C90. And there's also a couple other different ways that I, that I, I get trace minerals. Uh, and so, uh, you know, you can easily just look up trace minerals. You're going to find a lot, variety of organic sources of trace minerals. Or, or most organic fertilizers have some trace minerals, but not all of them. So you're going to have to really look into how to get uh, a variety of trace minerals. I myself make a product called Super C, which has all the trace minerals that I use myself in my business. But it's not an easy task to find. But you, you can do it. You can just write tr trace minerals and even... Ex so one of the best ways and easiest ways to control uh, diseases on these citrus would be to make compost tea. What you want to do is you want to make microbial, minerally rich compost, right? And uh, you know how if you study it a little bit, you'll see that it works best if you're aerated, right? And if you're aerated and, you, and if you uh, make it so that uh, uh, there's enough microbes in there and there's enough uh, <laughs> minerals, it, it will uh, naturally uh, provide the, the food it needs, the minerals it needs, while at the same time combating the, the disease. So the key here is to have a, um, 
a liquid blend, because the compost by itself won't have the particular type of microorganisms that you want, th that I want, okay? So ba basically I'm looking for certain types of microorganisms that are very good at working in the air, because that's the way they're normally found in nature, on the leaves of plants. And there, so there are many different types of micro, uh, microorganisms that work well in, in the uh, air environment and the leaves of plants, and that's what you want to do. So what you do is uh, you learn to buy blends of products that have these in them, okay? And so you want to look at the ingredients. You want to, it'll tell you what type of uh, microorganisms it has, what type of micro, mycorrhiza it has, uh, and for what specific things. So some of them are for root enhancement. Some of them are for uh, growth enhancement of, the, of leaves. Some are for flower enhancement, uh, right? So, so ideally, what you want to do is you want when you make your compost seed, because uh, see, normally when you do when you make compost, you're not really adding these microorganisms to the compost because there's a little com competition in terms of uh, the microbes will be fighting off the mycorrhizae, so they usually are not in the same place in the same. They don't, you can't compost them in the same place. But in the ground, once they get in the ground, they, they form a different type of, uh, of, of uh, cooperation between the, the, the mycorrhiza and they work together because they all eventually all becomes one type, of one, like one organism. And you'll find that the soil will take and use various different aspects of, what, of, the, of the mycorrhiza or the microbe or uh, you know, stuff that you find. Because that's what happens is when you, that's one reason why you want to use manure, because the manure has certain types of microbes that uh, are very conducive to growing in the ground, and they, and they do well with other types of mycorrhiza, but they, would, they should be in the proper environment rather than in a compost environment, whereas in the soil you have a blend of different types of organisms forming a, a, a more comprehensive network, right? And so uh, the, that, that's what you want to be spraying and so you want to learn to, when you make your compost tea, to also add a variety of other different types of mycorrhiza and microorganisms. You get a blend. You'll find someone will say, this is a blend of, of the top 10 most used, right? Stuff like that. And those are the ones you want to start adding to your spray, to your compost tea. So you have this really, really cool, incredible blend. And then when you're aerated, you have even more uh, 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 punch to control the diseases. And at the same time, you'll also be controlling the pests. So the trick is is to use the uh, the compost tea to your advantage to learn how to buy a product so you can add to your compost tea that enhance the microbial life. Uh, learn how to buy products you can add to your compost tea that increases your uh, trace mineral levels. Like I love that C90, right? That C90, 90 trace minerals. You can't beat it. You learn how to add just a tiny little bit on a regular basis. I also use uh, rock dust. You can add. Any type of rock dust to your compost tea, you learn. You have to learn the amounts. Too much, you kill everything, right? So that usually the rock dust is not uh, a, a large amount that you need to add. If you're depends how much size you're making your compost tea at. In a 55 gallon drum of compost tea, you probably could use a, a cup of rock dust. Okay, and it, and that cup ideally should be a blend of different sources of rock dust. So if you call me in the past. If you recall me saying in the past that uh, the greater the pest, the greater the the greater the stress, the greater the pest, the greater the disease. Well, that's exactly uh, how to protect your plants. If you can keep your bricks level up at a certain level, that's the measurement of sugar in the plants, but also relates to the how much minerals, trace minerals the plants has, and we can talk about that later. But then the pest won't won't come anywhere near you. The pest will not come over. It will not attack your fruit tree if it's not food for it. It would only attack the trees if, it, if it's food for it. It would only attack, it would only become food for it if the bricks level, if the, if, if the yeah, if the bricks levels drop, which also means the trace mineral levels have dropped. It's usually not all the trace minerals, but these are more, the, are the ones that are specifically, you have to pay attention to are the exotic trace minerals, which are very, very difficult to get on a regular basis as it is, and so you want to learn how to supply those along with the regular amount of trace minerals from calciums and iron and magnesium. And, and the trick is you don't want to, you know, uh, just add one type, you know, like 10 pounds of calcium. Unless you're a chemist, you know, if you know how to mix stuff, even then it's not the, quite the same. Uh, so I've learned to use materials like rock dust, which is a blend of different types, different, uh, different levels of tr different trace minerals, right? So uh, azomite. 
I, I, I like using because it has a certain amount of uh, calcium in it, right? Uh, also iron, and it's like 2% iron, which is nice. Uh, then, you know, there's glacial rock dust, and there's as, there's a Aquin, Aquimin from uh, Southern California, which is 30% calcium. So, and I have 14 different types of rock dust, so they all are, are richer in one type of mineral than the other one. And the odds are, if you get blend them all together, that you're going to come up with a really nice source of trace minerals. I also add, like I said, C90, SCA90. I have ref I reference a lot uh, the use of a refractometer and how you use that to measure your BRICS levels. It's a very easy tool to learn to use. It will give you some really good ideas as to what minerals you have. Uh, you just have to learn that a refractometer doesn't give you specific measurements of minerals. Uh, there are other tricks and techniques you're going to have to learn how to determine what types of minerals it has. It, has. it just tells you that it has a lot of minerals. Uh, the more expensive a refractometer, the more you'll be able to do that. That refractometer measures uh, other planets and what you know what metal material they're made of, what elements they're made of. So it can be done, but usually the refractometer that we get is really, really used to measure sugar. And uh, the, us good old boys have figured out that the sugar levels also means uh, trace mineral levels. And then you have to learn how to uh, you know know whether what, you know what's what trace minerals is missing because it doesn't really tell you, you know, they have calcium in it or you have magnesium in it. You just know you have a BRICS level of, say, 32. Usually means there's a lot, of, if you were to then test it, you know, you can send it to a lab, you'll see the minerals, and you'll see that it's, it, it's fairly accurate in how it measures the, the level of minerals compared to the level of sugar. So you have to, uh, I would learn how to do a, uh, use a refractometer. You can maybe you can spend 100 bucks, 50, 100 bucks for a refra good refractometer. Learn about bricks. And then you also, uh, that way, when you start getting sources of trace minerals, you'll be able to see if any of these sources are good for you, they work for you or not, right? It's the same thing with sources of soil micro microbials. Uh, with those, you have to send off to a lab on a regular basis, maybe once a year. Uh, to see what kind of soil microbials you have in your, on your property. So the most important thing you have to remember about controlling pests and diseases on your citrus is the soil, right? So you, that's the first thing you want to, that takes the longest too. That's why there's, you know, the short-term or long-term solutions, this is a long-term solution. So the sooner you get working on your long-term solution, the sooner you're going to get, get it done. And so the soil is important. You want to make sure that you know over water. You want to be constantly providing a source of, of topsoil to it, a source of compost to it, to it. Uh, learn how, how to properly apply mulch, right? Uh, and rock dust and organic fertilizers. Learn how to use leaves. Learn how, right? Help build up the soil environment to protect it, protect it from the sun. So the, the sooner you start working on that, the sooner everything will start falling into place. And from then, you, all you have to do is just be there to keep it going, right? So here, let me tell you the most important part, the key to everything, and how, why the pests uh, won't attack. So it comes down to carbohydrates. And the, there's two types of carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates and simple carbohydrates, right? And so it's interesting because when your tree is stressed out or, or you, 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 you end up producing simple carbohydrates. And simple carbohydrates is a perfect food, is an energy source of food for pests. And so they have evolved over the centuries or millions of years to know when a food is perfect for them. They don't have to say, oh, that tree is, is uh, deficient in trace minerals. So they say, eat, let's eat. And so it's just worked out really well, right? The tree is getting deficient in trace metals, it's going to die, might as well get eaten up and get recycled. But when it has all the complements of trace metals, when it's functioning, it's totally healthy, it produces complex carbohydrates. Complex carbohydrates cannot be absorbed by the insects. So they go, nope, can't eat that. And they leave it alone. 90% of all diseases are spread by the insects. So figure it out. So the key to protecting your plants is ha ha them having a high BRICS level, which is easier for you to understand, you know. Usually if you have a high BRICS level, you're doing good in terms of the trace minerals, right? So that's the key right there that you need to understand. Is having high trace mineral levels, high BRICS level makes it real easy for you, okay? 
So next week, we're going to be talking about, well, we still have one more week left in the organic uh, fruit tree care. And so I'm going to be uh, covering everything we've go, gone over before uh, and adding so, a, a few more new things for you. Uh, normally, the way we're going to be doing is we probably end up having homework things for you to do. What's going to happen is, is uh, soon, I'm going to, uh, the class, the works is going to be a private workshop only for members. So members, it will be a membership will get it free. And since right now membership is free, this is a good time to join. Um, just go up to the website, click join, it's free. But uh, as soon as, uh, as possible, as soon as I get the workshops together, it will be only free to members. And membership right now is $20 a lifetime uh, and uh, $55 for a uh, regular membership, which comes with the printed version of the book, which is a $20 book. Uh, and also includes uh, shipping. Uh, so, uh, but that's going to be changing. And then this workshop here will be open to the general public. Uh, I'll always have a uh, uh, something going on half hour here. But the other workshop that I'm going to be doing for members is going to be on, a, again, it will be on a weekly basis. Uh, we're going to have uh, almost daily uh, meetings via Zoom. Uh, in other words, if you uh, want to talk to me, it's available on a daily basis. Uh, the, the, the full workshop will be happening uh, once a week. Uh, but basically, it's every 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 week. There's going to be uh, something going on in the workshop, and we're going to be covering everything uh, that I can think about and everything you want to know about. So, if I were you, I would join today while you still can. The membership is free. Just go to invisiblegardener.com, click on join, and follow instructions. Very simple. Any problems, let me know. I had a friend who went to join. He had a very very old iPhone. Didn't work. So, you may, may want to do it on your computer as long as it's not really super old. So pretty soon, in a few minutes, we're going to be opening up the uh, the phone lines to allow people to call and talk to me. And if it uh, and I have some uh, emails I'm going to be answering for folks. So if you have a question concerning today's uh, workshop uh, about trace minerals or bricks or carbohydrates, anything at all, even if it has nothing to do with the with the class, just send email to Andy Lopez at invisiblegardener.com. Now I. I told you before what happens if you just send an email that I got so much email, it's hard, hard for me to find. So a few people said I haven't answered them. That's because I can't find them. What I prefer for you to do is join. If you join, you get the newsletter. Through the newsletter, you can respond to me. It goes right to a certain box. Now, if you don't want to join, you have this thing about not joining, fine. And she just said the newsletter is free. And then, then the newsletter will allow you to answer, ask questions. Through, for this workshop, once the workshop becomes for members only, you can only access it, the workshop through the link that's in the, either the newsletter or on the members only uh, uh, page. You have to have a you know user ID and password to get in. But this this one here will be the general public workshop. I'll have something always going on. You can send email to that, but you have to ideally just get the newsletter, click on I have a question, and you'll be able to talk to me directly. Okay. Otherwise, I will look, I'll do the best I can to find your e your email and respond to you in a timely manner. Uh, you can always type in uh, work, uh, radio show workshop in the subject matter and see if the uh, if the if, if it gets channeled to the right place. So in another few minutes, you you can uh, uh, call and talk to me. There are several different phone numbers which I have given out for you uh, and uh, uh, that you can do. Ideally, we want you to. I want you to use Zoom. So the numbers again are eight 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 six two seven six zero zero eight. Or you can call the direct line, 323-744-4831. I prefer you go to the website, to either my website or to the radio show website, and click on the Zoom meeting so you can come in through Zoom. After a while, I won't be announcing these other phone calls anymore. You're just going to have to do them through Zoom. I figured that if the kids can do Zoom, uh, we can use Zoom too, okay? So the phone lines will be opening up now. If you have any questions, just call. Uh, use the Zoom. Ideally, please use the Zoom. Real easy, it's free software. Uh, let, allows you don't you won't, don't worry, you won't be on the screen. It should be hearing your voice. But if you don't want to do that, use some phone numbers, and you can feel free to call. Make sure your volume is at a reasonable level, not really really low, because it won't work that way. So thank you very much for listening to my workshop and being involved. Coming up next is the other half of Don't Panic, It's Organic. After that is my co Cosmic Spaceship Show. Bye now. Boy, that guy never stops talking, right? <laughs> oh, he sounds familiar. Hi, everybody. This is Andy Lopez. The show is now live. That means if you want to talk to me, feel free to call me up. 
You can use any of the phones I, I, gave, I gave you. You can always always use Zoom. Uh, no worry, we won't be seeing you on the screen. So, uh, but um, so this is the second half uh, where I'm, op I'm open. To, uh, uh, it's going to always be open to callers. Uh, if I don't get callers, that's fine because I've done this before for a long, long time. I thought I would take you on a little ride first while we're, while we're uh, talking about trace metals and let you ex explain to you about trace metals a little bit in terms of how I see trace metals, what the purpose. I do another show called uh, uh, Cosmic Gardening and I teach people what the real purpose, in my opinion, not just my opinion, but lots of other people, scientists uh, have the opinion same opinion that when a, a cosmic rays shoot to the earth, right? They shoot to the earth every day. It's been going on for millions and millions of years. It's ever since the earth has started before when there was life here, uh, all living things, believe it or not, we get bombarded regularly with cosmic rays. Now the, 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 the trick is, is that it's not easy for us to uh, absorb the cosmic rays ourselves. As a matter of fact, some, sometimes scientists believe that the cosmic rays shooting and it, uh, bombarding your DNA can actually cause uh, different types of evolutionary traits to happen. So that's another story there. But essentially what happens is when the cosmic rays shoot through the Earth and they happen to shoot through these trace metals, there are at least 90 of them, each different trace metals, it depends upon which one it shoots through, will absorb the cosmic ray, will absorb the cosmic energy that the cosmic ray shoots out. And so when we eat the cosmic ray, because we can't eat minerals ourselves, we have to eat something else, they eat something else, they eat something else, so, not, so we can get the minerals. That's the reason why we really need the trace minerals. Other than, of course, the, you would say the obvious, the bodybuilding, and you build your body, your cells and stuff. The energy, we are cosmic beings, and, be, and we, this is how we absorb this energy. This is how we have evolved to, to, uh, to expand. We, as electromagnetics, beings we have all these energy fields ourselves and we need this cosmic energy for many many reasons our body absorbs it it gets spread out to the various different organs that we have energy organs we have energy systems you know we have a chop we have chakras 108 different energy centers in our body and these all need specific types of energy and these energy energy comes from the universe and the way it gets into us is that we eat it we eat it to in the form of the trace minerals and the trace minerals absorbs the specific energy. You talk to anybody that knows any of this stuff, they will tell you the very same thing. As a matter of fact, you, your body is full of these trace minerals that absorb these things. So when they shoot through your body, that tr trace mineral of iron or magnesium or copper or more exotic one like gold and cadmium and mercury, all these trace elements absorb a specific frequency which the cosmic rays shoots. So different cosmic, you're being bombarded with trillions of different types of cosmic rays all the time. Yeah, that's what a tree does. You know, a, a tree is like an antenna. And in order to, if it has to trace minerals, it will absorb the energy. I, I ran, I met a person, uh, Phil Callahan was talking about um, the, um, the ley lines of the earth and how, how in England and other places they built these churches right in the intersection of the ley lines. Oh, look at an example, Stonehenge. What do you think Stonehenge, one of the main things Stonehenge does is that it absorbs those, those particular specific types of rock, absorb this cosmic rays and then gives it out. Understand, right? <laughs> now you get it? And so th that is part of, of a reason why we absorb we need the cosmic rays because this is energy that we are connected to and we need to we need to be able to live in that evolve in that and this is how we have evolved in it that that's how we get so we when we're missing these trace minerals we're missing in essence that specific cosmic energy that we need for our own stability stability our own function if our energy system is not functioning then we are going to die it's the same thing with the earth the earth is constantly being bombarded with these cosmic rays and they're absorbing that energy and it's giving off the energy back off it so every living thing is on the planet and there are, are there are places now that are not normal in the sense that the, the trace minerals is no longer being absorbed throughout the earth mother nature has as a way built into it to recycle the the trace minerals so that everywhere on the planet gets the appropriate trace minerals that's needed and now the recycling system has been screwed up right right the earth is no longer uh, functioning the way it's supposed to be. That's why we're having this enormous climate change. 
It's one of the main reasons that we have set, we have screwed up with the energetic energy of the earth and in turn are screwing up with our en energetic energy. And so we no longer uh, 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 are in touch with what's going on with the earth. And I, I tell people all the time that we, uh, we a long time ago, we evolved from the earth. We decided we're going to get up and walk. We're going to take the earth with us. That's in our stomach. So we take the earth with us. But because we're separate from the earth, we feel we're better and that we can just know the earth was here for us. And so we have done everything. Up, we, well, for a long time, we were okay. <laughs> you know, so think of American Indians for thousands and thousands of years, never did anything to the, to the planet, right? But somehow civilizations as we get bigger and bigger, more power, more powerful, we uh, and, it, and, and we get more and more intelligent. We seem to have gone array. We seem to have decided that we can do whatever the heck we want to do to the planet. And unfortunately, we have been doing more damage. We have done more damage to the soil in the last fifty years than we have done in all the race, all the civilization of the human race has come before us. In the last fifty, to, even fifty to hundred years, we've done more damage to the environment, to the soil, to the water, to the air, then all, all the human all the human beings have done in the past civilizations, okay? <clears throat> that's not, that's even counting some civilizations that were here before, some really advanced civilizations. And so when, and, and I was talking to a, 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 a scientist who was telling me that, he says, you know, I've been studying the, the world's food sources, rice and things like that, that people grow all around the world. And I'm finding out wheat and those things that the nutritional level is dropping. And I'm convinced it has something to do with the carbon dioxide in the air. He's convinced that. And I said, okay, let me explain to you what's going on and maybe that'll help you. Uh oh, it turned dark. Why is it dark? <laughs> it shouldn't be dark, okay? This, this is not right. Let's see. Okay, so somehow there's a spot in there that's dark. Like right there. I must have missed something. <laughs> oh, boy, this is scary. I miss, I thought it was perfect. See, I'm not a perfect being. Look, I left a little empty space there. I, and it's like a, it's still going. So you know the empty space is... Uh, <laughs> it'll, it'll eventually change, right? Let me see. Yeah, it did. Isn't that weird? I got about a minute in their empty space. Anyway, so I told him, okay, so let's just think of the Industrial Revolution. He said, yeah, that's what, he's, that's what I was saying. The Industrial Revolution started the, the rise of carbon dioxide. And there must be something to do with the carbon dioxide. And I said, well, it's not exactly to do with the carbon dioxide. Exactly what's happening is that the Industrial Revolution started chemical fertilizer. That was the start of destroying the soil, chemical fertilizers. And of course, carbon dioxide started going up because they have more in industry, right? Industrial things happening. Uh, and then we learned how to make uh, uh, fuels, uh, plane, you know, use planes and we use uh, cars and more and more of those things, which produce more carbon dioxide. But the real problem was that the fertilizer started to destroy the soil. It's taken them not even 50 years to finally completely destroy the soil. It destroys, it kills the microorganisms in the soil. Do you know what the, the, what the main, 40% of the carbon dioxide in the earth right now, on the earth, that's, you know, it's that the earth is covering the earth, is not produced by cars. It's produced by mismanagement of the soil. When you ever, the farmers rotate till the soil, they're releasing the carbon dioxide stored in the soil. The earth, the soil takes in carbon dioxide, converts it to carbonic acid, uses the carbonic acid to break down the trace metals into a form of nutrient that is then distributed to anything that's connected to it, trees, whatever, right? And so, and, and then you also, and the, and the ocean does the same thing. The ocean takes in carbon dioxide into the ocean, into, in the water, and, and, and absorbs it. It uses it, the living beings there use it in various different ways, right? And it's the same thing with, and then we also decided we're going to cut down the trees. The trees take in carbon dioxide and give off oxygen. oxygen. So we have a variety of uh, different, let's see what's going on, a little chat here. Yeah, chat. Oh, Debra. Wow. Uh, can you speak, Debra? Hi, Andy. I'm surprised you're not in Washington, D.C. at the rally today. Oh, what rally is that? Trump's rally. 
Oh, <laughs> you you want me to go to Trump's rally? No, no. <laughs> How no. are you, Andy? This is a good show. This is a great little uh, segue from what you used to do. This is wonderful. It, is it as nice? I do. I like it. The half an hour of education. Yeah, yeah, and I've, I've gotten better at it. I'm getting better and better at it, you know, and the little graphics here and the graphics there, you know. I love it. I like it, too. I like I, it, too. Except uh, I, I tried to call in through Zoom, and I couldn't figure that out, so maybe I, I'll have to get a friend over here to help me do that. Oh, you couldn't do Zoom? You probably have it, have to download the software. No, I have Zoom. I do Zoom with my friends, but I... Uh, usually, uh, when I do anything professionally, somebody sends me like a link that's good for six months or something. Right, right. So that's and that link. I just click on the link and I get in. That's right. So if you uh, if you uh, if you had gone to the you know the BBS radio page with my thing, it will say click on this link to get in. <laughs> uh, well, I, I felt like I was searching around. I just wanted to contact you, and I was losing time, so I'll study it later. Yeah, yeah, and I, you know, I, 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 people should know that because when they go to my website, it sends them to the to the station, your know, BBS station. And it says clearly on there, click on here for the Zoom, uh, Zoom meeting. See, and that's that was the link you were looking for. Well, it's, I, I have a I have a phone number that is trying to dial into it. The four eight no, the, something. The phone number is not the one for the Zoom. See, that the phone number is the one you're calling now. No, no, there's a meeting number. It says join live via Zoom meeting number 466-384-06. Right, but that's not a phone. That's the link, that's the number you have to click on. It, may, it sounds like a phone. I'll, I'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah, it's not a phone number. It's just the number you have to click on for the Zoom. Okay, so has anybody else contacted you through Zoom? I, I, I'm assuming that I'm just sort of naive about this. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it usually there's there's been, there's been callers that's done that's called through Zoom. Doesn't seem to be anybody calling now, you know. But they they uh, they, they do call through Zoom. It does work. So you, all you have to do is click. And I think you just got confused. You thought it was a phone number instead of a Zoom number. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it just wasn't clear. Yeah, so everybody, this is Deborah. She's with me with before. She was in paradise when the whole place burned down, but she's back on Earth again. She took her spaceship and went traveling around to all the different galaxies and stuff, and she's back. I know. I had quite some travels, too, but I'm glad to be back with you, Andy, and, uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do together. Okay, great, great. So don't forget you're going you're gonna to be promoting this show and the other show, too, the Cosmic Spaceship coming up. I did. I did today. Okay, great. Thank you for calling. You have a question? <laughs> uh, well, I did have a question, but it's not about fruit trees. It's about my little dogwood tree. Oh, well, okay. What about it? Well, I got it in March, and it got in the ground in July, and because of the hot weather, um, the leaves are kind of curling and brown around the edges, but the main part of the leaf is still green. And I'm just wondering, is it is it going to survive? Well, you and everybody else too, sweetheart. It's the same problem a lot of people are having over here. The air is so hot, you know, it blows across them and just shrivels up their leaves. Uh, the first few years is going to be a tough one. They have to get older. So one of the things you may want to do is, you know, believe it or not, is somehow protect it from the wind. Maybe build a tiny little greenhouse around it or something so that the wind doesn't hit it somehow because that hit that wind is hot, right? Very hot. It'll just tear up the leaves. And so it makes so it really we've been, we've been in smoke. We've been in smoke, Andy, here in Grass Valley and Right, right. Nevada that smoke. City. I mean, right. Awful. Right. That right, that smoke is uh, is right. The smoke is toxic, probably very, very hot. So yeah, it's uh, there's nothing much you can do about it other than to try to protect it. Like I said, maybe build a little cage, tiny cage around it and, and maybe put a shade cloth around it to stop some wind from hitting it. I have no idea because it's just sitting there. It's going to get, and this is, uh, you know, it's gonna, when the summertime comes around next year, it's going to be even hotter. I know. I, I was thinking about putting one of those uh, patio umbrellas near it. 
there you go, something to cover it, something to help it to protect it for a little while somehow. You know, that, what I would do is I would build a temporary greenhouse, just get some wood, build a little structure around it, cover it up, maybe some shade cloths that the wind blows around it. You could take it down, put it up. Okay. So, something suitable to protect it. Because now, like right now with the fires, but there should be some time of year, maybe during the winter time, where you can leave it open. There. And then when it gets really bad, the weather, put stick that thing up there to protect it, something like that, you know? Yeah, that's a good idea. Four stakes and a, and a shade cloth on top of the stakes. Right, and tie them all together so that maybe the wind have to go around it and it won't be so hot in there. You know, Got it. burn it up. Okay? Thank you so much. Thank you, Deborah. Nice to talk to you again. Nice to talk to you, too, and good luck uh, in this upcoming week. You know, like I said, Joe, you, you, you would make a good uh, co-host, you know that. Well, I was going to suggest I have time next Saturday if you want to do a show together. Oh, cool, cool. That's what I would love to do that. But I was thinking, let's just have temporary co-hosts, different people try and see what they think about it. And then we can have a contest. Everybody can vote. <laughs> but did if you want to do that, that would be great. Before? What? What? Didn't we do that before? No. Oh, no, I don't think you've been on before. I don't think you ever did. You said, no, I'm shy. I, I don't want to do it. No, Andy, I was on with you before the fire. So I was on with you in 2017, I believe. In 2000, no, yeah, 2017. no, no. I think if you ask Donald, Donald, wasn't I on? Hey, Donald, before? Donald, where are you? He's not even there. He doesn't even listen. He goes off, smokes a cigarette somewhere, comes back. Hey, what's happening? I don't know. Don, see, he's not listening. The okay. Dia, yeah, the Dia uh -huh. is here. Donald. What? The D.O.N. is here. We have a question. The Don is here. Okay. <laughs> I thought it meant Donald Trump. I'm sorry. It threw me for a second. <laughs> hey, we got a question well, that, for you. So Donald, a, a lot of people I, I make that mistake. Before, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Donald, she asked hey, a question. They call me Donald Trump Gavin Newsom. Hey, hey Donald, did, was she on the show with me before? She was, and she was such a delightful part of your show. She, she was, yeah. Oh well, see, that's why. That's why I, I'm getting old. I don't remember it. I mean, I don't remember yesterday. Okay, so, so yeah, you, come oh, okay. on Saturday. So Donald, she's going to be on Saturday. Uh, uh, my co-host on Saturday. Okay. You got it. That sounds great. Yeah, that's. Fine. Were you going somewhere now, Deborah? Now I uh, I'm just I don't have any commitment for next Saturday, so I thought, well, and you know, see if you so want you, me to be on, so you're not using Zoom, so you have to use Zoom because you got to look at all the pretty pictures and all the stuff that I do up there. I mean, how can you do that and not even know what's going on everywhere else, right? Yeah, I can I can use Zoom. I'll give if if Donald can send me an invitation, or I'll try and figure it out, or I'll, Donald can send me an invitation, whatever. Well, he doesn't have to send you invitations. It's after. really easy. All you do is you go to bbsradio.com forward slash don't panic, it's organic, and then just click on the Zoom link right there in the top left corner. No, That's the, what I'll do then. That's, in the, that sounds very easy. I don't know why it wasn't clear to it's me. It's in the middle of the page. Was... It's in the middle of the page now. I have okay. to move it. It's, not, it's clear. It says click oh, here to Zoom meeting. I was meeting. looking around and I didn't, yeah. You can okay. try it. You can try it now if you want to. We got plenty of time. No, no, I don't want to waste it. You still got 10 minutes. You could be. Well, it's not a waste of time. I, I'll educate people until you come back. Go ahead, no, try I'll, it. I'll make sure I get it down next week. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> See you later. See you later. All right. We'll talk later, Andy. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Doc. Bye. 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 So that's Deborah. She's also going to be taking care of my guests and uh, other other things. So you know, if you people want to be a guest on my show, there are lots of and you think you have some knowledge you want to pass on. That's what it's all about. So uh, I haven't really been contacting people for guests because I've been going through surgery. Uh, you know, as an alien, my body changes into this blob, and I have to constantly be putting it back on. And it, people do six legs. I go, no, no, I'm only two legged. So it's a mess. <laughs> I'm having eye surgery uh, coming up on, on Tuesday. So I still have about seven minutes left of the, sh of the show. Uh, 
I, I don't remember the phone numbers to call, but you, I put it out there often enough. If you want to know, you just go to my website. I do prefer you use the Zoom because that's the best way to really enjoy the show because uh, there's so much uh, information I put up there that I really can't talk fast enough. So you can read it, you know, uh, like right now, if you're, if you're using Zoom, you would see I, I talk about Super C, which I invented in, in the early 70s. It's a microbiological activator. It has all the trace minerals your everything needs. I almost tend to drink it myself, <laughs> you know, but that's the key to, to my services, what I do. It has a beneficial organism, bacteria, and enzymes. It's really, and, and, and you know, one of the problems I'm having with, with is really the deep sea ocean seaweed. Uh, I bought a certain amount of it. I'm not going to be buying any more under the earth. The ocean cleans up a little bit. I have a feeling it's really, really toxic. Uh, so I've been getting food grade. Uh, a seaweed uh, f to use in my super seaweed product. I also use, like I said, I've, I've mentioned several times in the show, I use about 14 different types of rock dust. That goes into the seaweed, the liquid seaweed product too, because I basically make a, a primordial soup. One of the things we're gonna, I'm going to be talking to you about is how I make my super seaweed, how I make this, so, this primordial soup, how you can go about making something similar yourself. The main difference, what I make and what you make is I have pretty much invented a particular type of uh, microorganisms that you're not gonna find anywhere, uh, as, 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 unless it comes, comes from me. I, and I call it, again, primordial, I call it primordial soup because it's very ancient stuff. Uh, and I, I, I also uh, run a service here locally in Malibu, but I also cover a wide range area. Uh, I like to say for a magical garden, I did the artwork there. If you, if you didn't do Zoom, you would not be able to see my magical artwork and everything that I do. Okay, so I'm going to, I think I'm going to have to end the show pretty soon because the engineer, oh wait, I, my show is coming up next. So I have a, a little bit more time. Normally you have, you have to end it about five minutes before the show is up so that he can switch over to another one. We still going to have to do that to some extent. I think I got about uh, two minutes left here on this particular one. So I'm just going to let it keep going all the way to the end because that's about right. And then I'll switch over to my cosmic spaceship which is coming up right after this show on a different station it's on station two one person in waiting deborah are you waiting for something deborah you can just get off you know you don't have to wait are you waiting to oh yeah well anyway, i look forward to co-hosting with deborah i'm looking forward to having different types of co-hosts come up here and, and you know show me your energy show me what you got i'm looking for a permanent co-host I, I don't like talking to myself, <laughs> you know, so, uh, but uh, I'll be here next week, same time, right? Uh, and then uh, go to my website, invisiblegardener.com, join today, and it's free. Uh, in another couple of months, it won't be free. I'll go back to the regular prices, uh, but, the, uh, and then the, this main workshop will be switched over to the, uh, uh, the, the um, to the website, and it'll be only shown on uh, either probably be here uh, and you have to uh, you know have the special uh, link to to do it, the zoom link uh, by the way we're i'm now doing virtual house calls so if you all want a house call it doesn't make a difference where the planet you're on we can talk about that and so i have another um <clears throat> 35 seconds i'll be signing off and then i'll be coming back on station two for my cosmic spaceship so if you have any questions Andy Lopez at invisiblegardener.com. Better if you just go to invisiblegardener.com to subscribe. You know, better if you join. If you don't want to join, you could just free subscription to my newsletter. That would help you out a lot. Okay, so thank you very much. I'm, I'm going to be signing off now. I'll see you all later. I'll be back in a, uh, in a few minutes with the Cosmic Spaceship. Thank you very much. Bye now.